Okay, so we briefly mentioned what a random number generator is. So question is, in practice, what can I do to produce random numbers? So Intel CPUs has a nice property. So this is the picture I taken from their documents. As I mentioned, after 2010, uh, our CPUs started to come with hardware level AES instructions called AES-NI, new instruction set, right? So since we have an AES encryption inside these devices, we can use them to generate random numbers. So Intel the CPUs for this reason can generate you random numbers at the hardware level, which is super fast. Since AES encryption is super fast here, you can generate a random number in a very fast way. So what they do is as follows. So they have a hardware entropy source. Actually, they're looking at the I think thermal noise at the CPU, we will see in the next slide. So they get the entropy from the hardware and encrypt it using ASCBC MAC. Since we have the hardware level instructions, this encryption is super fast. Then looking at some NIST uh, standardization documents, they actually perform an AES counter mode encryption and send it to the RD run instruction at each core. So if you have eight cores, you can use eight of them to generate random numbers. So they can independently do all of this. So this is the good thing. So this is also valid for hardware AES encryption. If you have eight cores at your Intel CPU, you can use both of all of them to perform encryption. So your actual encryption speed increases with the number of cores your Intel CPU has. But if you focus on a single core, and if you're going to generate a single random number, for instance, a 64 bit, this is actually what is done, okay? This uh, RD round instruction actually uses this output as the seed value to this instruction and gives you a random number. Okay, so let me give the uh, definitions in the next slide, then I will mention why this is not always a good idea. Okay, so Intel processors with the property secure key means that that processor has digital random number generator. So Intel has a very nice web page called arc.intel.com where you can just search your CPU model and see what kind of uh, properties it has. So at the bottom, you will see that there's a line saying secure key. And if it says yes, then you have this uh, random number generators on your CPU, okay? So the entropy source runs asynchronously on a self-time circuit and uses thermal noise within the silicon to output a random stream of bits at the rate of three gigahertz. So it generates zeros and ones in a very fast way using the thermal noise. So if you go back, you have this zeros and ones. As I mentioned, this may not uh, satisfy the uniformity property we seek. This is why it puts it inside the AES encryption because the ciphertext will have the uniformity behavior, okay? So instead of hash function I mentioned before, you can use AES encryption here. Very useful for many applications. I constantly use it because in many cryptanalysis results when I want to perform experiments, I need a lot of random plain text, okay? So this is the easiest way to generate them. Okay. Be careful when using for cryptographic purposes because we cannot check the existence of backdoors. This is important. So as I mentioned, I am using it for cryptographic purposes, but just for the, you know, verifying my cryptanalysis results. But if you use this random number generator and use the result as your secret key, and this means that you are trusting Intel, saying that they hadn't put a backdoor yeah. in it. But we cannot check it. We cannot know if this, you know, there is a backdoor inside this entropy source, okay? So let me explain why this is the thing. So assume that I want to behave in a malicious way and I give you a random number generator and I say that, okay, this is a random number generator. It's a black box for you. You press the button and produce zeros and ones. You can apply any statistical test and you look at it and you realize that it passes all of the tests. Okay, it really looks random. So question is, can you use it for cryptographic purposes? For instance, can you use the output as your secret key? So if there's not a backdoor in it, yes, you can use it. But let me tell you an easiest way to put a backdoor inside such a system. So I can give you a black box and assume that inside it, 
there is a yes with a secret key I chose. And whenever you press a button, it performs counter mode of encryption. For instance, it encrypts zero, counter zero with my secret key and produces a ciphertext, okay? When you press the next button, it increases the counter and gives you another ciphertext. And all of this ciphertext looks really random looking and you say that, okay, I'm secure, this is random. But since I know the secret key and you are using the counter mode, I can at home run the same algorithm with the same secret key and produce all of the random numbers that you can generate by myself. So easiest way to put a backdoor and you cannot be sure without looking inside the box. And I cannot open and look at the Intel CPUs to see if there's a backdoor or not, okay? So for this reason, a very fast way of generating random numbers, but I wouldn't use it for generating cryptographic keys, okay? For other purposes, a fantastic device, fantastic property, even on a very uh, ultra uh, laptops with very, uh, you know, uh, slow CPUs, you can generate in a random numbers in a very, very fast way because this is done at the hardware level. It doesn't matter if it is 1.5 gigahertz or something, your course, you can really generate very fast random numbers. So fantastic property, but again, the result should be taken with a grain of salt, okay? So there are some standards, but there are some kind of, a little bit old and it is sometimes hard to reach them because th they are explained in some documents. Sometimes you have to pay money and they are referred to as in the appendix. For instance, as I mentioned, in a digital signature algorithm or elliptic or digital signature algorithm, you need a random number for every different message to be signed. So for this reason, in all of these standards at the appendix, they tell you how you can generate a random number. So you can use like Shavan or Des in this document. As you can see, it is old because it mentions Des. Or you can use the RSA ANSI standard like this, which also uses Des. Or you can look at a NIST recommended random number generator based on this, which allows you to use triple Des or AES. I actually achieved had access to these documents. I got screenshots, which, you know, takes input performs this encryption or AES encryption, but I'm not putting on the, the slides because, you know, they are kind of old, but there are just know that there are some standards. Okay. So let me again, talk more about it. As I mentioned, any implementation of the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm requires the ability to generate random or pseudo random integers. Such numbers are used to derive a user's private key D and a user's permissive secret number K. So this K actually reproduced twice in the Bitcoin example I mentioned. So if you transfer cryptocurrencies where you digitally assign them, but use the same random number twice in both of them, your private key leaks. So this is a uh, this is valid for digital signature algorithm, but also elliptic or digital signature algorithm. These random or pseudo random generated integers are selected to be between one to n minus one when n is a prime number. If pseudo random numbers are desired, they shall be generated by the techniques given in these you know, documents. So these are some standards. So let me talk about a bad example, a standard that is badly broken named dual elliptic curve deterministic random bit generator, dual EC DRBG. So, in ANSI documents in June, they included this random number generator. So we use the elliptic curve twice, and you know, the art, you perform operations on the points of the elliptic curve, then the result is hashed, and that is used as a random number. Since we are performing elliptic curve operations, it is a little bit slow compared to other random number generators. But since, you know, elliptic curves are involved and so on, you get the idea that this looks secure, okay? So first appeared in ANSI, then RSA make, made this as their default random number generator. Then as far as I know, Reuters claimed NSA paid some money to RSA to do this, but as far as I know, RSA denied this allegation. So later in 2005, ISO included this in their uh, standards. And finally, NIST included this to their standards. So as far as I know, the problem here is that you know, academicians looked at the standard, so it comes with an elliptic curve with some parameters, okay? 
So people said that they don't explain how those elliptic curves or the parameters are selected, okay? An academician said that we cannot detect if there's a backdoor in these selections, but we can choose our own elliptic curves and we can choose the parameters so that we can put a backdoor in it. So if we can do that, maybe somebody who created this idea also did that. So academicians actually warned people years ago. Okay. So, but later on, Snowden documents claims that NSA bull run project also put a backdoor to dual EC data random number generator. And uh, this document also say that NSA can easily break SSL. So it turned out that you can break the system either by you know guessing their secret keys due to this random number generator, but NSA could also break SSL actually because there was a backdoor in open SSL. You can look at the hard delete bug and see how they can do it. Okay. But until that time, people uh, trusted this random number generator. Again, in 2014, it is shown that you can put a backdoor to SSL TLS using this random number generator. So again, this is what actually the secrecy services has to do, okay? They have to weaken the standards so that they can listen to everybody, right? So here they're designing an algorithm which includes a backdoor. And you know, they NIST is actually blamed for this uh, for a long time, but NIST is the, actually the last person to make that the standard, okay? It was an IOC standard way before NIST made it a standard, okay? But of course, NIST should be more careful about making a standard. They have to, you know, um, has a strong arguments why those parameters are selected. So as you can see, if you have such a, a backdoor in the random number generator, it doesn't matter if you're using a strong cryptographic algorithm because we know the secret values, right? So as you can see, you can break SSL TLS just due to your random number generator. So after this event in 2015, NSA said that, you know, uh, until that time, NSA always supported elliptic curve cryptography and suggested migration from RSA to elliptic curve cryptography because, you know, RSA, there are many different types of attacks to RSA and RSA secret key has to be larger. So for the 256 bit secret key in elliptic curve, you need 3072 bits RSA key. Okay, so NSA always supported this, but around 2015, uh, NSA suggested not to waste time migrating from RSA to elliptic curve cryptography, but they suggested development, standardization, and commercialization of new quantum safe algorithms. So we know that these elliptic curve cryptographic algorithms that we use for digital signatures or encryptions like Algama and also RSA are not quantum safe. So this announcement puzzled many people because uh, they thought that if somebody, as if somebody is getting close to building a huge quantum computer that can break these systems. However, considering the budget of NSA and how much they reserve for post-quantum cryptography, we said that around those years, it is highly unlikely that they are about to build a huge quantum computer. And eight years passed, this looks like we were right at the time. So my personal opinion, was this at the time, and it's still valid. It is more likely that losing the backdoor in this dual elliptic curve is the random bit generator made NSA to want people to stay in RSA instead of elliptic curve cryptography because you can do more in terms of cryptanalysis there. So for more information, you can see a paper by Neil Koblis and Alfred Menezes, a riddle wrapped in, enig in an enigma. They explain why they think that elliptic curve cryptography is secure with current technology. Okay, so another example for a randomness. So assume that you need a random number for a communication, but you don't trust each other and you say that uh, we shouldn't be able to choose that random number ourselves. Let's do it. Let's, for instance, get that info from outside from nature, let's say. So you can use NIST randomness beacon for this. So ID is as follows. NIST have a lab and inside that lab, they have some equipment and this is called the randomness beacon. And this beacon broadcasts 
full entropy bit string in blocks of 512 bits every 60 seconds. So if you visit their web page, every 60 seconds, they generate the random number. Since it is publicly available, of course, you cannot use it as a secret key since everybody knows it, but you can use it as a nonce, for instance. Whereas in a communication, you can say that, okay, next nonce will be the next random number that the NIST will produce from this beacon. Okay. So beacon generated numbers cannot be predicted before they are published if the setup of NIST is completely secure. The public time-bound and authenticated nature of the beacon allows a user application to prove to anybody that it used truly random numbers not known before a certain point in time. This proof can be presented offline at, at any point in future. You can visit the web page here. I hope it still works, by the way. I haven't checked. So as I mentioned, two people can agree on a nose just by using the next output of the beacon. So this is the architecture of this beacon. So they have an entanglement source. So they use quantum physics. And from the source, they get the entropy data. They perform some bell tests. And if they pass, this data is sent to analysis. If they pass, crypto hardening and timestamp is applied so that it proves that this number wasn't known previously. And you know, after the crypto hardening, which means actually performing SHA-512, so that the output is now 512 bits. But they also signed this so that you know that due to timestamp, it wasn't generated beforehand. And they put it in their web server. So you can connect to web server and get this random number. So here's an example I took years ago. So as you can see, the cipher suite they use is SHA-512 hashing and RSA signatures with this padding. So this is the random value they generated, and this is the previous one. And these are the signatures they provided for this random number. As you can see, this was taken at 2022 at this date, at this hour. And here's an example. Of course, you have to be careful about the time zone, right? You should be focusing on the same number, okay? So this way, they generate 512 bits every minute. So if you don't trust the person, or for some reason you don't want a value to be chosen by somebody else, you can say that let's use the next random generator that is going to be generated by NIST. So you might say that maybe NIST is going to attack you by choosing a random number that will break your system. But in this case, they can only attack a single person or a single algorithm, right? But they're making it publicly available. So we are assuming that everything works correctly. 